People around me say that being a virgin after 16 is unhealthy. Is that true? Rapid fire answers to your most burning questions. All right, let's dive right in. All right, number one, can smelliness of farts indicate good health? The stinkier, the healthier. That's what I told myself to have a potential excuse in case of something. Yes, smelly farts could be an indication of health, but also it could be something bad. Our farts smell, that's common nature and that is normal. There's multiple different reasons why our farts could be smelling. You can have a high fiber diet when you have a lot of farts and that may smell a lot. You can have food intolerance, celiac disease or lactose intolerance, AKA you can't eat dairy or with celiacs you have trouble with gluten. There are other things where it can actually cause stinkier farts, infections within the gut themselves. Bacterial infections can actually cause stinkier farts. Sometimes even colon cancer can be an indication when you have really, really stinky farts or if it, it changes. There are a lot of things that actually can cause stinky farts. Ever heard of like broccoli farts or farts that smell like eggs? It's the hydrogen sulfide that's produced by the bacteria. You can have good bacteria or overgrowth of bacteria. It just all depends on your specific health issues at that time or not and what you're eating. It's not a direct, hey, I'm healthy because I have stinky farts. That's not a direct correlation. We all have gas. Sometimes they smell and actually sometimes they don't. Hello, Dr. Wagner, I love your channel very much. I appreciate what you are doing. Here's my question. Is reverse ejaculation dangerous? And what is it caused and how do you treat it? So reverse ejaculation is actually called retrograde ejaculation. It is not necessarily harmful. It could be the cause of somebody being infertile or basically not being able to make somebody pregnant. The sperm in the testicle leaves via the vast deferens that goes into the prostate. And then it mixes with the fluids that make up your semen as a whole. But what happens is it's also connected to your bladder. So it actually retrogrades back into your bladder as you ejaculate. So sometimes it, people will actually describe it as like a dry fire or a dry orgasm. You'll actually still climax and you'll still have an orgasm, but you won't have anything actually come out or a very small amount come out. If you want to get somebody pregnant, you will actually need to get that fixed. Or you definitely need to check out a urologist. Sometimes in the hospital, we can actually test and see that there's actually sperm in the urine. Typically what causes it, it can cause by previous surgical issues, lymph nodes in the area. It also could be an issue with the muscle relating to the prostate and the bladder itself. Multiple different reasons, typically nothing too dangerous. I would get it fixed if you wanna be a dad. A purely hypothetical question. If I need a small, but not too small, amount of my own blood for a ritual or forging a dark magical artifact, where do I best cut myself for getting this blood? Like in the movies across the palm of the hand or is there a more convenient spot? No, don't do that at all. Do do not cut yourself. Do not use your blood for ritual events. A toast. Oh, what? What do you got there? Oh, oh, yeah. No being Machine Gun Kelly, Megan Fox. If you need that blood work done or get tested for something, please have it done at a reputable place where somebody using a sterile technique, they're using needles and they're trained to do that. Please, no slicing your palms, stabbing yourself to get blood out. No, no, no. Could you add this one to your videos? If you only had one testicle, can you have kids? And if so, will there be any problems with the kid. Yes, you can have children, you can have kids, you have one testicle, you're producing enough testosterone, your hormones are in check, you're producing enough sperm, then only the good sperm are going to make it to the egg to fertilize. You will have a normal kid. Genetically, that is. I can't say anything further than that. And it goes the same if somebody, say, only has one fallopian tube. Let's equate that to female anatomy. Can you still get pregnant? And the answer is yes. High probability. So having one testicle or one fallopian tube will not inhibit you from a healthy kid, most likely. Hey doc, what are some advantages of being left-handed? Is it true that lefties are more intelligent than righties? How so? Statistically, anywhere between like 10 to 20% of the population, depending on where you are, is left-handed. And actually, historically, a lot of kind of people in history are left-handed. Thought leaders, actually ex-presidents, Oprah Winfrey, Leonardo da Vinci, Babe Ruth, I think even Justin Bieber is left-handed. So then the question is, are they more intelligent? Left handed individuals have to be a little bit more creative. So they've actually shown studies, they do better than right-handed individuals. Think about it, they're living in a right-handed world. Scissors, things at school, books, even writing, it's just a more right-handed world dominant. So they have to figure out ways to get around that. And they're taught that at a young age where they figure it out. A lot of left-handed people are also ambidextrous. So they're actually using both sides of the brain. A lot of times right-handed individuals are very one-sided in the brain versus left-handed individuals are actually 
and more balanced and actually they're able to use the creative aspects of their brain a little bit more. Left-handed people have the potential to have the ability to be a little bit more skilled at problem solving than right-handed individuals. Are you guys right-handed or left-handed? Let me know in the comments. I'm right-handed, but I've played soccer my whole life and I can use both feet, no problem. I often see females putting their phones into their bras. Does this increase the risk of breast cancer due to the direct contact of the phone screen radiation source and the breast? Good question, but there's actually no studies that actually show that cell phone use increases the risk of cancer. Yes, we theorize this and think, okay, there's some sort of radiation electromagnetic fields that are being put off by your cell phone and then question, does that increase your risk of cancer? So you're saying, or we're theorizing that whatever the phone is giving off, it's going through the skin and damaging the cell. They are working on long-term studies to figure this out. If you're concerned for having your phone causing you cancer, don't have it on your body as much, right? Don't shove it in your bra, don't put it in your front pocket, your back pocket, keep it away from your testicles, that sort of thing. We have talked about it before, where it potentially can heat up the area, which then could mess with your sperm production. But having an increased risk of cancer so far hasn't been proven yet. What a great series. I got a question for you. Do you sometimes get recognized by patients coming to the ER? Actually, every now and then I'll get recognized. I'll get recognized by actually law enforcement and I'll get recognized by late teenagers, early 20 year olds, and then also a lot of medical students and residents will also recognize me for being either Dr. ER or my occasional time on Gameology, they'll recognize me as well. I am a 19 year old man and I'm still a virgin. People around me say that being a virgin after 16 is unhealthy. Is that true? So to answer this question, virgin equals not having sex with another person. At the age of 16, not having sex with another individual is totally fine. Having sexual relations with an another individual, yes, it helps with your sex hormones, it helps with the musculature, but it also comes with the other side of making babies, the concern for, and then infections. Being a virgin at at age 16, 19, 20 is totally fine. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated if someone would describe that they are not having any type of ejaculations or releases. That's a different story. We can have a topic of conversation on that another time. But for this specific question, no, you are fine. Well, my junk is all kinds of messed up then. Question for you, doc. Can the lack of testosterone affect the junk size also? Yes. If you have low testosterone, you're not having a large amount of the male sex hormone in your body, your testicles will potentially atrophy. It's not you being used to make sperm. On the flip side, for people who actually do steroid injection, testosterone and things like that, if you abuse it and you're using too much, specifically to try to get huge and jacked, what it's telling your body is to stop making normal testosterone, your testicles will actually atrophy as well because you're actually not using it appropriately. Unless you have significantly low testosterone and you need to supplement, that is a good time to use testosterone. But taking excess amounts of testosterone, more than you actually need, can inhibit your natural testosterone, which then will shrink your testicles. All right, next question. Hey Jordan, a medical question. My doctor once told me my heart is located on the right side of my body and he said it functions just the same. Is this true? I've read that this gives a higher risk of lung infections or pneumonia, though I tend not to take these claims seriously. So good questions. When the heart is on the right side of the body, it's called dextrocardia. With dextrocardia comes other medical problems. So it's a rare condition to begin with. If it is just the heart on the right side of the body all by itself, no, you're not at really risk for anything worse happening or increased risk of infection. But typically when you have dextrocardia, there are other anatomical anomalies that are occurring. So yes, you could be at risk for esophageal abnormalities, bowel abnormalities, increased risk for infections. If somebody does have this, you definitely need a workup with your primary care doctor to see if there's any other issues that you need to identify now so you can be ready for it potentially in the future. But in isolation, having your heart on the right side of your body doesn't necessarily mean you have increased risk of other medical problems. Great questions, everybody. Keep them rolling, keep them coming. If you really enjoyed watching this video, I know you're gonna love this series right here. So please binge watch all the embarrassing medical questions video. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.